Howdy all. I had a message yesterday from a very irate uh, client who was saying, did you see the, the recent UK Cow Club, um, you know, positional statement on raw feeding or post on raw feeding? And normally when I hear that, I go to the post and I look at it. I also get annoyed. I roll around my bed thinking of all the things I would say to the author of that piece if I had them. Uh, and then I put that together in an article this morning and I would flesh that out and it would usually get quite long and I'd post it normally to Facebook. I don't know why I keep doing that and Facebook won't show it to anybody and, you know, it might 100 or 200 people of my 60,000 will be showing it. And, uh, you know, I'll get a thumbs up and everything, but not enough people read it and understand. So I thought maybe video would be a better way to do it. So I'm going to go through the piece in uh, live time. Haven't read it yet. You can believe that or not. And uh, I'm just going to go through it and I'm going to tell you what I think as I read each section. I don't know how many words it is. It looks about 1500. The kind of club .org .uk. It's called Raw Dog Food. So this is a, sounds like a primary piece. And as a title like that, this is what we're thinking. As the name suggests, raw dog food is uh, comprises mainly of uh, primarily non-cooked animal ingredients. Yep, it includes raw meat, bones, organs, fruits, and veg. Mm, sounds good so far. What is raw dog food? I thought we just answered that already. Known as BARF, which stands for Biologically Appropriate Raw Food or Bones and Raw Food. It includes the above. There are two uh, types, homemade and commercial. Okay, we agree so far. This is great. Is raw dog food good for dogs? Now, here we go. Let's see if they touch upon any of the crucial studies that we know. When it comes to how healthy a raw dog food diet, there's a lot of debate between veterinarians. There sure is between veterinarians. Pet nutritionists, less so significantly, and dog owners. Yeah, they're in the middle. They are torn between listening to vets, reading veterinary articles, and uh, listening to bloody bloggers online and their nutritionists and their you know, newfangled ideas. 40,000 year old fad. Uh, uh, those in favor of raw dog food claim, I love that. So now you know straight away, those in favor of raw dog food claim, these guys are not going to come at you with a number of studies. Those in raw dog food claim, mm, there we go, they think it offers a number of health benefits, including a shinier coat and healthier skin, way down the list of what I'd be talking about. Thanks to the high quality protein sources, correct, as well as essential fatty acids, correct. Healthier teeth, Correct. Chewing on raw bones is good for cleaning dog's teeth. Correct. That's a fact. Better digestion. Absolutely. You nailed it. You should have put the link to the study that was published in Nature that shows dry fed dogs are more prone to gut entropy, gut disease than raw fed dogs. That would have been great to put a reference there for vets to read it. Uh, more energy fans of raw dog food diet claim that their pets are more energetic and vital overall. Uh, there is a number of uh, behaviors that will back that up and others will say dry dog food does that because it's a little bit subjective when it gets into the behavioral category we need studies and we don't have them however not everyone is in favor of raw dog food diet and uh, here comes this gets a bit longer here some veterinarians and nutritionists don't know any independent nutritionists that would raise any of these points below uh, some potential risks but bacterial contamination harmful bacteria like salmonella e coli can be found in raw meat and bones correct this can pose quite serious health risks to not only to dogs can it yeah, I'd love to see these the references missing there, but also to their owners who are handling the food. Yeah, this this can pose quite serious health risks. Yeah, if you go along and pick up raw dog food and eat it, om nom 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 nom, uh, you can be at risk because the the meat sector uh, has some baddies in it, uh, and particularly depends on how the animal is finished. If you're rearing animals in these disgusting CAFOs, concentrated animal feed operations that we slag, uh, initially started kind of we we slag the Chinese off for, uh, but the Americans took that process and perfected it into their CAFOs. More than ninety percent of their beef comes from that. And now there's a thousand mega farms in the UK. So they're producing animals in very cramped, uh, not ideal conditions, concentration camps, essentially, for, for these poor animals. And we know pigs are in the same situation and all the poultry. And they're fed on natural food sources like grain, cheapest calorie that you can put on put into them. So uh, wheat and corn. So when you feed animals like this, particularly cattle, if you finish them on grain, uh, the amount of salmon E. coli ramps up. So food chains can be contaminated with those uh, bits and pieces. That is a, that's a fact. Uh, the thing is that kind of suggests that it's a raw meat and dog food, raw meat, raw dog food issue, when actually it's a dry dog food issue. In fact, in the US, dry dog food is recalled 10 times more than raw dog food uh, when we're talking tons. So, you know, they don't mention that. So we know dry dog food has this problem. It's the biggest cause of dry food dog recall. So that's a big, big problem. Why is that not mentioned? They, they say it's a raw dog food issue without pointing the finger over there. What's happening over here may pose a risk to humans. It can do. Uh, um, 
But does dry food pose a risk to humans? Absolutely. In 2006 to 2016, we had 132 people that got uh, salmonella from pet food. Every single one of them from dry pet food, none in the literature getting poisoned by raw dog food. Isn't that strange? And half of those 132 were toddlers under two years of age. Didn't your vet tell you? Uh, so that's the very first point. Bacterial contamination. Absolutely, you're dealing with meat. Is dry dog food safe in that respect? Absolutely not. And then you've got all the other contaminations like storage mites that raw dog food doesn't get, mycotoxins, which cereal and pet food is full of, and all sorts of issues. And so we have got plenty of studies to show dry food is not out of the woods because it too contains meat and it sits in a sweaty little plastic bag, you know, six months down the line, you open it, leave it open to the elements. Of course, that has issues too. Of course it does. Ridiculous. We've got two enormous safety studies of raw dog food. One with 8,500 responses. Soon probably to get to 100,000 if uh, they get the next tranche of funding for it. That's the Helsinki survey. And one in New York, which had about two and a half, three thousand, I think, by Desocrantis and a few others. And uh, they had very similar results. Incredibly rare people getting poisoned by raw dog food. They never seem to mention the safety studies. They just, just missed it. Nutritional imbalances of raw dog food. Dogs have very specific nutritional needs, guys, based on their age, size, and activity level. Very, very specific, very scientific. And it can be difficult to meet those needs effectively when preparing a dog's diet at home. Really? Um, based on what? What do you mean? Um, it requires a lot of thought and careful planning. A lot of thought, guys. You wouldn't be able to do it. So uh, to ensure dogs don't find themselves getting too much or too little of the nutrients they need. Very important. Of course, you can feed your kids yourself. Of course, you can do that. They're just children. Nothing complicated about a child at all. Feed them whatever you want. Don't be stressing. But a dog, oh my God. Best you leave it in the hands of Nestle and Mars, the enormous multinational candy companies with woeful reputations for adequate nutrition in humans. Best trust those guys. Come on. More to the point with nutritional imbalances, the Davies study in 2017 never referenced when it comes to mentioning these nutritional imbalances concerns of raw feeding. We know 62% of complete dry food and 94% of complete canned food sold for dogs in the UK, 160 different products were sampled, didn't meet the minimum nutritional standards set by Afco Fediaf. The minimum. So dogs aren't even getting the minimum. So you have a one in three chance of picking up a dry food, complete dry food, even sold at the vets, they're also included, of giving your dog the minimum standards. Do you want the minimum nutritional levels for your pet? Or would you, like, hopefully the minimum, one in three chance of hopefully getting to the minimum, or how about working to get the optimum? These ideas of nutritional excesses from raw-fed dogs, where are they? Because when you talk to actual vets that feed this stuff in the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society, hundreds of them, they don't see these issues. What nutritional excesses are they talking about? The body does not handle new, uh, normally presented natural nutrients the same way they do conical flask nutrients. To suggest that raw dog food is the problem there, and not dry dog food, which hypervitaminosis is a very common reason of um of, of dry pet food recall too much vitamin d hills pet food 22 million cans at one factory and they didn't check a single one of them uh you know it's such utter nonsense for them to put that in there stinks absolutely stinks choking hazards or broken teeth chewing bones can be good for dogs dental health they can studies show absolutely they can but it's important that they chew on the right types of bones correct and they're properly supervised dogs don't need to be supervised over every bone they eat but for the first once or twice yes keep an eye on your dog that they're doing it right and that all as well when things go wrong it can lead to damaged teeth choking or gastrointestinal blockages when things go wrong with cooked bones and inappropriate chew items for sure uh, they can damage teeth. All bones can damage teeth, I suppose, but the big hard bones we avoid and yada, yada, yada. Go read an article on how to feed raw bones to dogs. But we have studies of 200 beagles followed for six years fed oxtail. That's a very hard beef bone. Not one I'd be recommending from beagles, to be honest with you. They should be on medium-sized animals. Those big, big beasts, half ton in weight, their bones are too big and hard for, for dogs. So these 200 beagles fed oxtail, raw oxtail, for six years. How many had damaged teeth at the end of it? Zero. Zero. So let's see the evidence they're talking about, that raw bones causes damaged teeth. I would say it strengthens teeth. You've got to work the teeth in the jaw. You've got to get fresh calcium and glucosamine and chondroitin and all the stuff, collagen. You need that stuff to make your teeth nice and strong. They use it or lose it. When you're eating little pellets of porridge with a cow's toenail in it you think that's helping the teeth we know to like the vast majority of these dogs are suffering um gum disease by three years of age you think that's good for the teeth as opposed to the slight risk of, of chipping the tooth eating the bone you know choking perhaps everybody can choke you know the most commonly choked on item food items are like bread rolls chewing gum raw vegetables is that a reason not to feed those things no it's not but it can happen but it's very rare we're not seeing any of it you know nation of millions we're seeing very very little choking none choked to death yet that i know 
gastrointestinal blockages, yeah, with cooked bones, not with raw bones. Haven't seen any evidence of that whatsoever. Finally, pups and dogs with weakened immune systems. Puppies grow rapidly in our energetics, so it's important they're receiving the right nutrition. Totally agree. For dogs that are immunocompromised, they may be susceptible to the risks that come with raw dog food diet. Show me. Prove that to me. Prove that to me that an immunocompromised dog does better on a product that is shown to be inflammatory. So dry dog food is inflammatory. Two big studies of dry versus raw fed dogs. Okay, case controlled. You're feeding them this and you feed them that and check their bloods. It's highly inflammatory. So are you saying dogs that are immunocompromised do better on highly inflammatory food? Chemically preserved, which napalms are good for, which adds to inflammation. Little to no omega-3s, which adds to inflammation. That's all good for an immunocompromised dog, is it? Give me a break. When you've both got bacterial issues to suggest that dry dog food has solved some issue for the immunocompromised, I would say absolutely stay away from that stuff. You've got to give as much juice to the immune system as possible. And we know Feed and Raw does that. Very misleading, dangerous remark. UK Kennel Club, not surprised. In addition to the risks, there's also the time and cost. It's just so much hassle feeding real food to your kids. You know, don't bother. You know, you've got perfectly good frozen pizzas and they are absolutely 100% nutritionally complete for your, for your animal. We know exactly what your dog needs every single minute of the day. Oh, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Trust us for 10 euro a kilo for prescription pet food. Oh, this is a very sarky one. Sorry, I didn't think I'd get this animated. What should I consider before switching my dog to raw dog food? Ensure your dog's raw diet will give them the complete and balanced nutrition. This may involve careful planning, research, calculators, the addition of supplements to be sure that your dog's getting all the nutrition they need. How dare they? What about the addition of supplements to dry dog food? Study after study shows if you add anything to complete dry food, the dog does better. Fish oil tablets, they get less skin disease. Blueberries, they get um, uh, better uh, oxidative output when they're pulling sleds. You know, a colorful veg, green and orange veg, and the, the, the animals have less bladder cancer. Oh, study after study. Add anything to that bowl and the dogs will benefit because the food is so nutritionally bereft. But they're saying it's really important you supplement raw dog food, you know, because it's so, so dodgy. Made by the same companies that have to answer to the same authorities. Do you think that like raw dog food is just made and they can be as contaminated as you like? They've got the same vets looking at them. They stick, they go to the same Fediaf profile as dry dog food. They just do it better. How much raw dog food should I feed my dog? The amount you feed is all this. Speak to your vet first. In the line, how much raw dog food should I feed to my dog? First bullet point of six. The first line is speak to your vet first. Why would you speak to your vet about raw dog food? If your vet promotes fresh food, and you'll know that because they won't be selling anything made by a candy company in their reception, why would you talk to a vet first about feeding fresh food? They don't recommend fresh food. Unfortunately, and it's not the vet's fault, it's the veterinary industry that churns these vets out, absolutely. But why would you go to Ronald McDonald and ask him about the benefits of feeding the salad? You know, it's just, it's just not what you do. They have an agenda that they push, not vets, I'm talking about the industry, but this hasn't. there's an agenda to sell dry dog food so when you're talking to the person that sells dry dog food they're going to sell dry dog food and be worried about raw right or wrong that's what that's what they're going to think because they don't sell fresh food or promote fresh food or you know that's not their thing so why would you ask them for their opinion on selling fresh food i would go to a vet that promotes fresh food so speak to your vet first highly questionable speak to a vet that promotes raw dog food first Good idea. Absolutely. That's a, that's not a bad thing. I don't think it needs very particular advice. To be honest with you, I think you can jump to any complete raw dog food before speaking to a vet. I don't need to speak to my local GP before I give my kid a different vegetable or a different meat meal. You know, I think I'll make a beef strong enough. I wonder, is that safe for my kid? I'll call my GP. Yeah, GPs are the first place I'd go to for nutritional information. Uh, calculate your calculate your, deaths, your your pet's daily portion. That's a good idea. How active is your dog? Yeah, all these things. They give some points about how to feed raw, but I just wouldn't go to the UK Kennel Club for that advice. Uh, does your dog have any allergies? If so, they may be sensitive to some raw ingredients, guys. Oh, oh that's a... Monitor your dog as they begin the new diet to ensure they are tolerating the ingredients and there are no adverse reactions. The second part of that idea is okay. They may be sensitive to some raw ingredients. If dogs are sensitive to chicken or beef, it's usually because they began life on, uh, you know, chicken and beef flavored dry food. They develop those food intolerances because we know dry dog food rots the gut, studies show, published in nature. Uh, and so if you let that gut disease progress, you can develop food intolerances. And if you're eating chicken or beef flavored dry food, you can develop an intolerance to chicken or beef. 
That's got nothing to do with the fact of jumping to raw. Jumping to raw to heal those things. So the, uh, a big master suggests that um, it, it it helps with leaky gut, improves the biome, all sorts of things. So like we know that jumping to raw reduces in less, less gut disease. So to say that the raw ingredients are the problem is just misleading. You're they're missing a whole article there. They should have linked to an article there about the development of leaky gut and how to avoid it but you can't really talk about that because you can't sell dry dog food and talk about leaky gut because the two of them are linked and you know what can you do very tricky uh hard to keep everyone happy you know and be conscious of the risks again the risks guys make sure you're up to speed and how to handle and prepare raw food safely be proactive and cautious when it comes to the risk of choking hazards and dental issues caused by chewing on bones don't agree don't uh, disagree with that why not okay be careful good idea put in time and effort Time and effort, guys. Put in the hassle. Put in the hassle of feeding me the food to your pets. Be aware I can take time and money to ensure your raw dog food diet provides me. Time and money, guys. You know, feeding raw. Time and money. So the great benefit of their health, a little bit of time, a little bit of money, you know, uh, best you spend that money at the vets. I think it's probably easier. Just don't think about the crap you're shoveling into their face every day. And uh, what was that recent survey there by the... Uh, Pro veg kind of study that somebody did where raw dog food uh, dogs were twice uh, less likely to go to the vet in a year and over and four times in a year as well. So it seems like uh, raw dog raw fed dogs go to the vets less. That's the latest published study. It's only a survey, but you know, still it seems like they're using the vets less. And if they suffer less skin disease, fact and gut disease, fact. Uh, with the top reasons for visiting the vet today and soon uh, otitis, ear conditions, top recurring skin, ear and gut conditions, are the top three reasons for visiting the vet. So if raw feeding reduces those, then you expect them to go to the vet less. That is dreadfully confounded by the fact that people feeding raw tend to use the vets less. They will Google a supplement. They feed more supplement studies show. So you will Google the answer. You won't go for diarrhea or constipation. You'll fix those issues yourself. You know, you'll take more control of your dog's health, whereas people that are dry feeding may not. And they would go to the vet with every single happenstance, which a lot of them fueled by the food that they're on. So it's all very, very confusing. And trust is plummeting in, in uh, between raw feeders and the vets because of their stance on uh, on nutrition. Um, there are some commercially raw dog food diets which may be worth considering. Generous if you're short on time. Be realistic about the amount of time and money. Time and money again, three times in the two sentences. Whoo, time and money, time and effort, time and money. Mm. Does a raw dog food diet fit with your lifestyle, guys? Do you travel a lot? Do you have a busy schedule? Think about your own routine, please. And how could you be able to accommodate the switch to raw dog food regimen? Bottom line, your dog's health and well-being is the most important thing. If you decide to feed your dog a raw diet, it should be ultimately be for their benefit. Okay, not too bad about it. Article author. Oh, my God. This is why the person was going mad. Content provided by ProPan, the Kennel Club's partner in dog nutrition. ProPlan, their first link. No other studies above it. Their first link, ProPlan. What's that? It's Purina. That article was written by the makers of cereal-based pet food. Can you believe it? So the Kennel Club will take its cash sponsorship between them and Purina. And then they just let Purina write this at best misleading vacuous piece and put it on their website how many owners are going to the uk kennel club for advice uh that absolutely stinks that's why the lady was going absolutely mad okay there you go guys that's my analysis of that piece just another nonsensical you know shitty organization taking cash sponsorship from uh cereal based pet food and then letting them write in their website and on we go you know it's just that's where we are today. You cannot blame the public for being confused over what to do, you know, when uh, big big groups like that will just take money from whoever and um, and then let them write on their website and use their good name, which carries a lot of weight, you know. So uh, boo, boo UK Kennel Club, not the first time and uh, won't be the last. And it's all about money, 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 money. And uh, if I was looking for advice on fresh feeding and raw feeding, I certainly wouldn't go to the makers of cereal-based pet food. I would go to the Anybody, my website, dogsfirst.ie, you might go to the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society and get their positional statement. Anything, anything but like, you know, Ronald McDonald. You know, we 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 all fall for it, but now it's time to kind of just um not fall for it and wake up and uh, don't feed that crap to your pets.